now do metal strings. Yeah, it's the same thing really. That these two outside ones are the same gauge string, the first string and the fifth string. And being the thinnest strings, the most likely to break. These are essentially the same four strings as, as the top four strings of a guitar. So you've essentially got two first strings. So if you bought the gauge of wire that the string is, it, it's well worthwhile. Well cheaper. And unlike fishing wire, fishing line, uh, you can buy this sort of thing in reasonably short reasonably short length. So I think that might be my first string, is it? Yeah, one of them. So this is... what's the gauge on that? Oh, I can't see, I can tell you. <laughs> but it's thin. <laughs> and... I, again, I prefer a non-wound string for my fourth string. Yes, so I, I just wanted to point out about metal wound strings like this. So it has a, a steel core and then metal is wound around that. And the reason for that is you don't have to have quite such a thick string. It means they can get the same note, the same depth of note, but on a thinner string with a lighter feel, but only slightly lighter. And so if one is only using an unwound metal string, it would need to be a little bit thicker than the equivalent wound string. And that's why my fourth string on the banjo is a 0.8 mil rather than maybe the 0.6 that it might correspond to. So the thickest one, the fourth string, I've got 0.8 of a mil. But it, it doesn't have that raspy sound when you're moving your fingers around like a guitar does. This string sounds more like the others do. So I reckon that one's worth buying, the fourth string. And that top string actually is 0 0.3 of a mil. Yeah. This this string is broken and I wish to replace it. I've got some suitable gauge wire and um, I'm going to make my own metal string. Steel string. This would be my technique. Firstly, I get a small nail, something like the sort of nail you'd have on a cable clip, something that's small enough to pass through the eye of the ball end, but not pull through. Okay, so then all I'm going to do really is to grip the cable a little bit more light. Hang on. You know, I think that might actually help. Can you see what I'm doing now? Look at that. So I'm going to grip the cable. They're really springy things, aren't they? Guitar strings, steel guitar strings. Okay, I'm going to grip the cable with my pliers, pretty much where it starts the wind. And then I think I'd only need to do an anti-clockwise fashion in order to unwind and remove the ball in. I can now dispense with the old one. Now I can introduce my new wire. Make sure that it's not kinked anywhere. I've got a reasonable end. What I'm going to do now form a little loop. There we go something of that nature and then 
Now I'm going to put my ball end in the loop, trying to get it the wire in the groove, in the middle groove of the ball end. And then I'm going to pull that really quite tight. And I'm going to give it a bit of a twist by hand. And then I'm just going to reverse the process really. I hope you can see this. I'm just going to grip the wire together again. And this time I'm going to go clockwise. I don't know why I've decided it's clockwise and what isn't. But go the opposite way. The opposite way to the way that you unwound it if you're holding it in the same orientation. And really that's probably enough. You don't want to over twist it because you might snap it. Um, and I can take <laughs> I can take my nail out now. No idea where it flew off to. Take the nail out now. And there we go. My new ball end string. And I can cut it any length I want. So if I've made the mistake of making my peg head or uh, headstock much longer than usual and standard strings don't fit, it's no longer a problem. <laughs> I can make them any length I like now. Uh, I hope this was of some help. Thanks for watching. Over and out.